Hey everybody, welcome to this brand new two week series called Exclusive Drop. We're talking about identity and the truth is, our identities are as customizable, unique, and high quality as a piece from our favorite designer brand. If you ever asked yourself the question, who am I really? This series is definitely for you. So I remember when I was in high school, you know, Everybody was wearing this brand called SRH. And I, I kind of liked it, but I kind of didn't like it because it just re represented a bunch of like stoners. And you know, I wore it because it was cool, but I always questioned myself, who am I really? That feeling is pretty big, maybe even overwhelming. It's a question that's hard to ask. Who am I? When you ask that question, a whole bunch of labels come to mind. Maybe answering that question feels overwhelming because several things come to mind and some of them don't even seem to go together. Or let's go deeper. Isn't it overwhelming to manage several different identities across several different contexts? This makes answering the question, who am I, really, really overwhelming. And isn't it true that we change, which means our identities can change. There's who you were in the past and who you are right now and all the possibility of who you could be in the future. Maybe you've even heard things like, you can be whatever you want. That message can sound really empowering, but it also can make you wonder, if I can be anything just by picking something, who am I really? What's the difference between temporary versions of me versus who I really am? All of it leads back to the big question. When the labels are gone, and the expectations are gone, and the pressure is gone, and the freedom is gone, and it's just me, who am I really? The way that we navigate our identity externally will never answer, who am I really? We're gonna spend a few minutes looking at three passages from the Bible to help us answer, who am I really? At a core level. To answer the question of our value, we're gonna start by looking at the passage found in the book of Psalms. Psalms 8 is traditionally thought to be written by an ancient king of the Hebrew people named David. <clears throat> and this is what he wrote. When I look at the night sky and I see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with your glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds, all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean's currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name, fills the earth. See, David is saying the world is full of incredible things. All we have to do is look up in the sky and see some of them. And yet, God made us as people even more wonderful, even more amazing than the most beautiful parts of creation. This passage from Psalms is a great starting place for us as we talk about who we really are and what that means for our identity. Before we work hard to earn the label of valuable, this psalm reminds us that just being human makes us an impressive piece of valuable work. So to answer the question of who we are, David says, we are made with glory and honor. You are valuable to God. Now that we understand that, let's look at Genesis 1. It tells us why humans are so different. In this book, the writer talks about God creating the world and writes, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Right there, in the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible, we see what makes humans different from the rest of creation. But even more than that, 
We read what grounds us, what anchors us, what starts as the first building block for who we are. God's image in us. God's image in us. So, to answer the question, who are we? The writer of Genesis says, we are beings who carry a part of God's identity, or we are image bearers. Another way to say it is that we are representatives of God. The problem is, you and I know this, we don't always live like we are representatives of God. And that's a problem, because that means even though we have God's image, we can begin to live like we don't, like we have like we no longer remember the answer to the question of who are we? Let's talk more about that as we look at one more verse. The last passage we'll look at comes from the New Testament book of Colossians written by or written after Jesus had come to earth. This book was a letter that Paul had sent to a group of new Christians as a way to encourage them in their new faith. They forgot they were image bearers. Because of that, they needed to be reminded of who they really were. And Paul tells them this, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all of creation. Now, we've tried on many identities that we lose sight of who we really are. We can look at Jesus who showed us what living in the image of God looks like. So who are we? We are the image bearers of, we are the image bearers who sometimes forget who we were made to be, and so we look to Jesus to remind us of what that image looks like. What God says about you is the truest thing about you. You were made in God's image to look like God, to show the world what God is like. And in Jesus, we have the perfect example of what that is. So what does that mean for you? It means you get to live out who God made you to be. And who is that exactly? Well, God is bigger than any one of us, so each of us gets to reflect God in our own way. You can express yourself uniquely while you stay true to who you really are. And who you are is an image bearer of God. And we can determine what makes us unique while staying true to who we really are, made in God's image, by asking ourselves some questions. And <clears throat> some of these questions answer, who am I? And who am I is the big question. Trying to answer that can feel overwhelming, but what if you actually started living like you know who you are? What would it look like if you started to live like you were an exclusive drop from the God of the universe using you to reveal what God is actually like.